everyone and welcome back to the Adventures in Collecting YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the toys we talk about on the show and today, howl with me, oh, we are taking a look <laughs> at the G.I. Joe Classified Series uh, Timber and Snake Eyes 2-Pack. Uh, this is one of my um, most uh, anticipated toys of the year. N honestly, not so much for Snake Eyes. My expectations are low for the Snake Eyes figure. The, the Alpha Commando Snake Eyes is not, uh, personally, is not my Snake Eyes. I, I much prefer the Ninja, but I do love the weapon assortment that he comes with. And come on, Timber. Look at that. I cannot wait for an articulated wolf, just in general. Like, mm, very cool. So, quick tour of the package before we turn it around and get it inside the light box. Of course, we have our great uh, art here, um, both on the, uh, or excuse me, on the spine, sorry, wrong spine, on the spine and on the on, on the front here. Um, really, really great job, uh, again, on the, uh, on the custom art for each of these. I love that it changes um, on every package. And then, of course, on the back, we get our really awesome, um, ever-expanding, ever-growing, uh, poster art here with all the characters that we've seen so far so um really cool i keep waiting every time one of these comes out i look and i see if there's like a new character hidden in here that we haven't seen yet i keep waiting for them to sneak in for lenny to sneak in storm shadow here but um yeah so with that let's uh let's get this into the light box and let's take a closer look at snake eyes and timber to pack Right, here we are, we have Snake Eyes and Timber out of the package, and mm, wow. I've already made some kind of adjustments and some uh, changes to the way that they are in the package, but before we get into the actual figures themselves, let's talk a little bit about the accessories. So we'll start with Timber, because Timber only has one accessory, and that is an additional head sculpt. So the um, kind of stoic neutral face is the face that comes on Timber, and as you can see, we'll, we'll get into the paint detail in a little bit, but amazing detail. Love the, um, you know, the, the scarring uh, on Timber, uh, the, the texturing, the, the kind of... Um, the, the way the paint hit has a little bit of brown in it. Uh, just a really, really great job. Uh, and it just kind of plugs into uh, a, a post, you know, that, that comes out of his neck. So uh, the other the other face, as you can see, is the, um, that's his angry face. Uh, you know, the, the more um, dynamic face there of, of him snarling. And then it wouldn't be a G.I. Joe figure without a, a, a loadout, really. So Snake Eyes comes with a series of, uh, of weapons. And what I really like is these weapons kind of range from things that look, to me at least, a, a non-expert of firearms, look to be more on the real side of things, um, which I think really helps you know, with these figures. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this some sort of Uzi. Uh, you know, it almost looks like something that the, uh, that, uh, Captain America or Falcon, uh, would use, but again, you know, just a really nice, uh, as you can see, some really great sculpting work in there, uh, really good job at that. And then there is some sort of automatic weapon, uh, here, you know, uh, to me this looks like to be a little bit more on the futuristic space weapon -y side of things, but I think it's awesome to have a nice combination of them. Again, I like the little, just kind of details, uh, the, the sculpting in here plain black plastic but you know looks great and then um i'm gonna borrow snake eyes here i set him up for this little shot but uh he also comes with another uh machine gun of some kind here uh so again you know just another really nice machine gun it does have a port on the front uh for for a blast effect uh moving on uh he also comes with a pistol and a silencer for said pistol and as you can see they port really nicely into his uh, holster here. Oh, I pulled it out the wrong way. Um, they port really nice into, nicely into the holster. Uh, this silencer is not going anywhere. In fact, it's, it's kind of difficult to get out, which is nice, which means once you have it in there, it is in there. The pistol, again, really nice. Um, and then it does come with a port for the silencer. So have assassin snake eyes <laughs> uh, and again you know it does fit in there really nicely and then the last accessory that comes with snake eyes here is a really really nice uh, hunter hunting knife uh, really really nice job with this I love that this is not a, an all-black accessory um, you know it, it has a really nice metallic uh, 
silver wash to the, the blade. It looks really nice. And unlike my original Snake Eyes figure, my original classified figure, the dagger actually fits into the sheath. So how about that? Um, speaking of which, uh, he cannot hold all of his weapons. He does have the um, the the uh, backpack accessory uh, hole back there, which we'll see in a second. Uh, yeah, so he does, he's able to hold the pistol, the silencer, um, and the dagger store on him. Uh, in terms of his hands, he's able to obviously hold all of his weapons, including uh, a sword, if you were to give him one. Uh, but... If you do have the previous version of Snake Eyes, which I have not actually tried this yet, so we're gonna try it live right here and see how it happens. Um, so if you have the previous version of Snake Eyes with the backpack, uh, the backpack, of course, um, you know, does port in, and I think it actually looks really nice with the Commando version. And then on the side, he doesn't have any weapons that have that kind of port system, so you know, you're not able to. Uh, you know, store these in any way on the backpack, but, you know, if you wanted to, you could absolutely have him wear the backpack. Uh, it, it is cross-compatible, but unlike the first version of Snake Eyes, he's not able to carry his entire loadout, which kind of bumps me out just a little bit. Um, it's one of my favorite features about these figures in general, but, uh, you know, overall, it, by, by no means is it a deal breaker. So while we have Snake Eyes in hand here, let's go over his paint detail and articulation. Uh, he's black. <laughs> so uh, there is uh, some some varying uh, different types of paint that are used here. Some you know, a mix of, of matte and uh, and you know semi gloss to gloss finishes on him, which really pop and and you know really kind of pull out the texture on him. Uh, so you know you do get the the lines and the the outfit, the wrinkles and the pants, all the pockets. Um, all the kind of bells and whistles, the goggles, everything has a nice, uh, a nice look to it. Um, I believe, I do not have the beachhead figure, but I am told that this body is mostly reuse and is mostly the, the beachhead body. Um, but I, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, it's a commando suit, so yeah. Uh, but again, great detail all throughout. Articulation is, uh, what you've, uh, what you've come to expect from G.I. Joe figures. So we have the ball and post um with the neck joint there so he can look up about that far he can look down about that far we do get the a little bit of uh side to side motion there and of course he can spin we do have um the i, I guess we'll call them butterfly joints they, they are butterfly joints in there but they're not moving back uh as far as say like a, a spider-man butterfly joint um but they do give you a wide range of motion there we have a nice double jointed elbow we have our bicep swivel we have our wrist articulation, and then of course, because this is a character that is uh, holding firearms, the wrist uh, pivot goes in the other direction. Instead of going like this, it goes up and down, which is awesome. Uh, makes for, for posing, uh, holding weapons you know, very nicely. Uh, there is an ab crunch in there, um, but you can't get to it because of the vest. So really you're looking at a, a turn, uh, you know, side to side so he's not really going to be able to crunch much you know in either direction um the legs you know great uh amount of movement from them backwards and forwards they do have the slight drop down to them which is nice uh lets you get a little bit more of an extension there we have double jointed knees that uh that work really well so he's not going to kick his butt but you know he is going to get a, a nice bend there and then of course the feet are our standard feet um, we have a, a hidden uh, calf swivel at the boot, up and down, and then our swivel. So a nice wide range of motion here from Snake Eyes. Uh, all in all, uh, a figure that definitely exceeded my expectations. Um, I don't know if he will end up being my display Snake Eyes. We're going to play with some head swaps here at the end. Uh, but it's a very good figure all in all. However, this guy. This is really the, the winner of the set here. Um, this is an all new venture for the GI Joe team. Uh, you know, doing an animal. We have not seen anything like this in Marvel Legends, Star Wars, uh, any anything like this. The closest thing would be the um, the wolf for the, the Dungeons and Dragons two pack, which I, I don't have. Or excuse me, uh, it's not a wolf. It's a cat, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a cat. But uh, yeah, it, it's a. This is this is incredible. They did such a good job. First of all, the paint on it throughout. I mean, he's got the cute little paw prints, um, and they are raised. So 
my guess is, and I have not had the chance to try this yet, but like if you were playing with this in say sand or something, you know, like mud or something, I think you could absolutely leave a paw print with these, um, which which is awesome. But a uh, huge, huge, huge amount of movement on this this uh, this figure here. So first of all, um, we'll start with the head. So he's got two pieces of articulation here for the head. So he has a uh, at the neck which allows you to kind of look, you know, move the neck a little bit up and a little bit down, and then a huge amount of motion from the head here because we have a, a, a double, a barbell in there, a, a post barbell. So he can look down about that far, he can look straight up, he can turn both ways. Um, you do get kind of like a rock back and forth, which is awesome. Um, just a really nice amount of movement, you know, from, from the head here. Uh, moving into the body, we have a, uh, I, I guess we'll call this a, a torso joint, but you can kind of rock it side to side, which is really nice because you can get kind of these really, um, you know, dog-like movements out of out of the figure, which is which is awesome. Um, really kind of helps sell the the dynamic motion there, uh, and then it also kind of swivels. So, you know, you do have the ability to not only just rock it back and forth, but you can actually twist it as well. Um, and then the tail, we do have, uh, you know, it's on a, uh, a ball joint there. So you get full, full motion uh, around and then uh, up and down. And it depends on the way that you place it, but you can kind of give his tail kind of different, um, you know, help him emote with it like a, like a dog would. Uh, moving to the legs, we do have these really interesting um, ball joints here. So, you know, the, obviously the, the sculpt hinders how far they can go out. Plus, you know, it's also a, a dog. Um, I, I, I need to play with it more to see how much, like, you know, I got to actually sit and look at pictures of dogs and see how many positions I can really get him into here. But it, it is it is really nice. I mean, you can you can move them pretty much all the way almost perpendicular to his body um and then almost all the way you know pretty much all the way forward too uh and then you do have single jointed we'll call them elbows i guess um that give again for like a really nice amount of movement and then you have his um for lack of a better term i guess you could say wrists but uh again like you can really get him in these these really cool um, dog-like positions. Uh, they did a really good job putting the articulation in the places that it needed to be. And then you do have, like you would have on your feet, uh, on, on the, uh, the G.I. Joe figures, you do have your, uh, swivet, sw swivet, making up words now, your, um, swivel and your pivot on them, which is, which is really nice. And the same goes for the back legs. Uh, the back legs, uh, you get a little bit more freedom just because of the, the thinning out of the, the sculpt here in the back. But again, um, same, same level of articulation on these. Uh, it, it really is uh, marvelous. I, I, I really hope that they are, have the option to add some more animals um, into the lines now with, with, uh, with the addition of timber here because um, it's super fun to pose. It's super easy to pose uh, and, it, and it looks fantastic. So, you know, my, my mind's already thinking, you know, uh, the first thing I, I think of is it would be awesome to have a, a pizza dog figure for Marvel Legends, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, so awesome, awesome, awesome uh, two-pack here. So let's take a quick look at some comparisons. So I'm, I'm gonna get Timber out of the way here. And first and foremost, let's just see how the Snake Eyes figures look kind of next to each other. Um, you know, and we'll do, we'll do a couple quick head swaps here, but you know, so we have, uh, we have three Snake Eyes figures available so far uh, in the line. So we have the Commando that we just took a look at here. We have the movie version of Snake Eyes. And then of course the, um, the OG. So we have the, the original. Um, they're all the same height. Uh, the, the body feels about the same on all of them. Um, if you're curious, uh, you know, to see what the Commando spawn, the Commando spawn, excuse me, the commando uh, snake eyes would look like with a different head on. You can see his head pops off very easily. Uh, looks like the bowl is different. All right, so this is not gonna work. 
So you can see, uh, you know, the, the ball size is different, unfortunately. So, uh, and I actually think that looks really cool, the, the snake eyes mask on the, uh, on the commando body, but that is not gonna work. Um, let's see, how about, I think this might be the same size, let's see. No, I'm wrong. Oh no, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Okay, so this might work. Uh, it's a little big. All right, so the head, this head fits a little bit better, um, but as you can see, you know, it's still, it's still loose on there. Um, it's not gonna fall off like the other one was, but uh, you know, it, it's still loose. But I actually dig the, the, um, the snake eyes, like the ninja mask on, uh, on the, uh, on the, the, the commando body here. But I, I actually really like the, uh, the way that the sword looks on him like that. Yeah, there you go. And then you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? You get your snake eyes with timber and you give him, give him one of his weapons. And now, uh, and now snake eyes is ready to, uh, ready to do some damage here. And right, there we go. Boom. Yeah, that might be the way to go. That might be the way to go right there. That way you get the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, so this is a great set. Let's let's flip it around and let's wrap it up. So there you have it, guys. There is your look at uh, at Snake Eyes and Timber, and this set rips. Um, I am shocked at how much I'm actually really enjoying uh, uh, Commando Snake Eyes here. Uh, I, I know it's mostly, if not all, just a repaint of Beachhead, which I, I don't have on hand, but. Um, uh, it's it's still a great looking figure and even for uh, those figure photographers out there if you're looking for just kind of like black ops um, you know masked bad guys I know it's kind of hard to army build a two-pack especially one that's hard to you know a little harder to find but I mean think about it you're army building and you get an, an army of black ops uh, you know bad guys for for your Marvel Legends uh, you know to take out and then you get an army of wolves a wolf pack so um, definitely not a bad bad deal if you're if you're if you're going down that road um, yeah so I was uh, I was fortunate enough to catch this in stock at uh, at GameStop so um, I've included a link to the the GameStop listing which is at this time um, currently out of stock I've, I've included a link to it in the description below but um you know keep an eye out for this set uh as of the recording of this video it has not officially hit hit anywhere yet uh, i have not seen any pictures of it in um you know at retail but uh keep an eye out for it to pop back in stock online um if you are uh, i just i'm this wolf man timber chef's kiss um as always, hit that subscribe button down there so that way you don't miss videos like this of us taking deeper dives into the toys that we love. While you're down there, click that bell icon so that way you get notifications when we post new videos and you don't miss anything. Um, while you're liking and subscribing and hey, maybe even leaving a comment below, make sure you follow us here at AIC underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter where we're constantly posting toy news, uh, toy reviews, toy photography, deals, availability, anything and everything we think uh, we can post to help the community out. And then, uh, of course, the podcast. So Adventures in Collecting podcast can be found wherever you listen to podcasts. Simply search for Adventures in Collecting or at the link in the description below, which will take you to our website. You can find all the things that I just mentioned. Stick around after the fade here for some additional photos of Snake Eyes and Timber. And uh, as always, until next time.